Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience. My name is Rachel Fan, and I work in the communications division here at OID. Thank you so much for joining our senior fraud webinar series. For your awareness, I do want to mention that this webinar is being recorded. Before we get started, I wanted to share a little bit about what the Oklahoma Insurance Department or OID does. OID is a state agency and we are responsible for regulating the insurance market and enforcing the insurance related laws of the state. We have an entire team devoted to protecting consumers by providing them with accurate information and timely assistance. We can also help deal with your insurance company if you cannot reach an agreement regarding a claim. If you would like to reach out to us for help or if you have any questions, you can call us toll free at 1 800 522 0071 and you can also visit our website at oid.ok.gov. For today's webinar, you will be able to see and hear us. However, we cannot see or hear you. If you have a question, please feel free to post that in the chat. Down at the bottom of your screen, you will see several options, one of those being chat. And if you click on that, you can type your questions there. We will save time to answer questions at the end of the webinar. Now I'd like to introduce Ray Walker. Ray is the Divisional Director for the Medicare Assistance Program at the Oklahoma Insurance Department. Mr. Walker has over 20 years of experience working in and around the healthcare industry, primarily in insurance, and has had the privilege of speaking to groups across the state and around the country. Ray, over to you. Thank you, Rachel. And, and again, folks, sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, those of you who know me know that if you've got a question about Medicare, please come and see me. If you've got a technical question, I will refer you to my five-year-old <laughs> granddaughter who knows way more about this stuff than I do. But anyway, I appreciate you guys showing up for this second webinar in our series this year. Uh, if you missed the one last week, uh, Jose Oliveira was talking about social security fraud. And if you didn't get a chance to see that, be sure you go to our website at oid.ok.gov uh, forward slash senior fraud, and those recordings are available after these webinars. And we'll talk more about how you can find those here in just a minute, but we're really happy you were able to join us today. Uh, if you know of anybody that, that doesn't know about these, please spread the word. We really, really, really want to get uh, as many people involved in this fraud fight as we possibly can. I don't know if any of you were reading, I was reading an article this morning about another huge fraud scam that is, is taking place right now that's impacting the federal government as it relates to COVID-19. And it's, it's so discouraging um, when things like this are happening. So please, we gotta get everybody involved in this fight. Uh, wanted to remind everybody that these events are made possible in part through funding from our Senior Medicare Patrol Grant. That's the one that gives us funding to go out and educate seniors on how they can protect themselves from becoming a victim of fraud, waste and abuse in the Medicare system. It's estimated that over $60 billion is lost every year from the Medicare trust fund due to inappropriate activities. And the only way we're gonna be able to impact this is if we get people educated and teach people how to report that fraud. So we, we wanna make sure that everyone is aware of that. So now I am very pleased to introduce our speaker for today, Elaine Dodd. Uh, Elaine, did, Elaine spent 22 years in law enforcement with the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics retiring in 1995 as their director. Now as the executive vice president of the fraud division for the Oklahoma Bankers Association, she provides training and investigative assistance for banks and fraud training to thousands of bankers and customers. In 2013, she was the recipient of the State Attorney General's Brad Edwards Consumer Champion Award and was inducted into the Oklahoma Women's Hall of Fame. Uh, Elaine also is the recipient of the 2014 FBI Director's Community Leadership Award. Elaine, thank you so much for joining us again. We look forward to hearing what you got to say. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ray. And I too apologize for the technical issues because these folks have done a yeoman's job of making this perfect. We practiced and practiced yesterday. Everything worked perfectly, but the WebEx glitches or WebEx monsters were somewhere in the internet today. So um, you'll bear with me where Rachel is running the slides from there, which I rarely do because I go through them so quickly. So when you hear a lot of next, I, I'm sorry, but that's the only way we're going to get to the next slide. So next. Uh, just our title slide to give you my information and next. 
in Oklahoma, we have the only fraud association, uh, the only fraud division in any association, bankers association in the U.S. that we're aware of. We, because of that, we've been able to do extraordinary training and help for all of our bankers statewide. So you can count on these bankers, which we'll come back to. And it's great to be old. You'll hear through my stories. Um, it's the contacts. It's the collecting people every day that we use to help you guys. So next. Risk assessment. Um, I love this slide because it is the truth of what is out there. You cannot be worried about the, the things that are not going to touch you. So you have to assess what your risks are. Here the pop news, the risk is high and, and the severity is serious. If something is a big issue in your world, let's address it, but don't sweat the small stuff. That's what I'm here to tell you. We can get you through anything. Uh, please don't hesitate to talk to your bankers. So next. This would be a lovely slide that I'm going to reenact for you because we're in this mode. We, we cannot run it. It's just 30 seconds. Uh, it's adorable on YouTube if you want to pull it up under black and gas. But it's a it's a news guy who's saying there was a wreck on the highway and there are cows out there. Adorable. They named them black. That's black or maybe gas. I don't know. And his buddy said, um, hum, do you think that might be black Angus cattle? It's adorable. It's just don't be that guy. He is so got on that point. We use that with our bankers when I'm training them to say, hey, you don't want to be that guy. You have to be able to to know everything that you can about fraud so that we can best help these people. And if they don't know the answer, they can find you the answer. So don't hesitate to talk to your friendly banker next. Uh, the things people need from you. A lot of these are toolbox. And I do want to mention to you that, that the insurance department has been great to put these on their YouTube page later and have information up. So you should be able to go back to these either through a link or their YouTube page and look at all this. A lot of the toolbox stuff I'll go through very quickly for that reason. Uh, what scammers need, bank account numbers, credit card numbers, your social security pins, you know the things that you're going to protect. Next. They're getting your information through mainly phone and internet scams, but they're still stealing mail. They're still phishing checks and things out of blue boxes, the mailboxes. Um, there's just a million ways they're getting our information. Next. The elephant in the room has always been all the breaches out there. It's Equifax. It's everywhere in the world. And what you need to know is your information is out there. Everyone in the world has probably been impacted by now. There are great articles on Krebs on security, but things you can do, uh, consider a credit freeze and create your own My Social Security account, uh, ssa.gov, before the bad guys do it for you. Next. <coughs> Excuse me. The big three for safety, this is the always. Looking at your credit card statements, I have your monthly, I look every other day. Same with your bank statements, I look every other day at my bank account. And looking at your credit report throughout the year, not an every other day deal. Uh, next, banker training. The, we do so much training in Oklahoma and your bankers are so good at this. We've always trained our bankers to know your customer, but your role is to know your friendly banker. Know who you, that smiling face that you can go up to and talk to and, and be reassured that they can help you. Next. Elder exploitation is just simply a financial or, or otherwise illegal unauthorized acts to steal money from folks that are older. And that is a sliding gauge on what is considered as elder and older. Next. Uh, why are adults at risk? I just want to pinpoint a couple of things in here and most specifically the one that's highlighted. Older adults might be lonely and socially isolated. That has been exacerbated by the phenomenon of COVID. People are at home. People are more isolated. So it, it's the people who go out and play dominoes with their buddies or see people at church that are able to talk to people. If you know someone who is socially isolated, please, please be that friendly voice that calls them on a daily basis or as often as you can and say, how you doing? And that way they have someone that they can talk to if they think they're going through a fraud. Another one on here that I do want to point out, vulnerable due to a grief from a loss. The fraudsters so often hit people right after they've had someone they love pass because they know we're most vulnerable then. So next. 
Elder adults uh, might fear retaliation by the exploiter. They might be saying, we won't get you your medicine. We won't bring you food. Uh, there are so many things for, for folks to be fearful of. They might be dependent on a family member that, who might pressure them for money. We see a lot of that. Next. POAs, power of attorneys, uh, please be sure you know. Think long and hard about who you trust as your power of attorney. It may be someone that you has schmoozed you and you might think it's the right person. Really think about who you want to have your power of attorney over your funds and or your guardianship and revisit that question throughout the years. We had two cases in Midwest City where one, a biological daughter took 70,000 from her mom, one, a grandson took 240,000 from his grandma. Uh, both of those, the perpetrator went to jail. Next. And you need to think about who you have on your bank account. We had a case in the past year where someone had a friend on their bank account because they were helping them to, to pay their bills and to do some things. When that person passed, they had a lot of money in their bank account and the friend was able just to go in and clear it out. Uh, that's not what was intended by that person and her family was uh, pretty devastated by that. So uh, it, it's kind of good if you can have a trusted contact so your bank knows who, who to trust if, if they need to ask a question about your account too. That's another thing that is very helpful. Next. Examples of exploitation, we'll go quickly through these. Uh, we've talked about the POA, their investment scams, which we'll talk about, uh, theft of money or property. The lottery and sweepstakes still rears its ugly head. Can't believe it's still out there. Next. A grandparent imposter scams where they call in the middle of the night, oh, it's your grandson, I'm in jail, I'm embarrassed, but you're going to have to wire money. No, they're not. Find your grandchild or whoever they're saying they are. You're guaranteed they're not in jail and they're not wherever they say they are. So that's an easy one for you to check out. They, they get you in a rush. Uh, debt collector scams where they call and say, this is IRS. No, they're not. Uh, and charity will give you a good resource at the end of this. Next. Reverse mortgages, uh, there it, it is a great way for an older homeowner to continue to live in their home, but you have to be sure what you're doing. It is a loan and they are subject to scammers. CFPB, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, has a great piece on their website for consumer education on that point. And here's another link. So you can go back to this and look at this and, and go to Investopedia site on it also. Next. Who are the abusers? Um, it is everybody. It can be family members. It can be friends and neighbors, the POA that we've discussed. Listen to your gut feelings. Do they make you anxious? It can be strangers calling you on the phone, internet scammers, uh, contractors. There are just a million ways people can try to get in the pockets of our older vulnerable citizens. Uh, and when I say vulnerable, not all of them are what we would classify as a bad vulnerable. It's just you might be in the moment vulnerable. Next slide, please. Romance scams are the biggest, still the biggest way that we see people stealing money from people. Um, in 2021, they, their estimate was over 540 million stolen. And you know that's the tip of the iceberg. You know most people are not reporting romance scams. So they'll find an affinity group. An affinity crime is where they belong to your same church or your prayer group or your book club. And then they say, oh, you got to get in on this deal. Uh, or I, I love you and, and I'm in the same group as, as you are. Uh, they lure marks off of the monitored sites. Uh, if, if you're on, say, Words with Friends, which is a, a site that can't be exploiting you, they might say, go to Google Hangout, go to WhatsApp or some way that you can send them money. Uh, they also have you wire money. There's a million ways that, that they have people sending money. When you think, if you think you have something like that going on, you can use a Google reverse image search and you might see that person's image all over the Internet. Uh, just Google for the facts you're presented and always share what's happening with a trusted friend and or family. I had an investment advisor that brought me in to talk to one of his customers recently, and the customer was determined to show me how beautiful his lady was that he was in love with. Um, however, the fact was the, the banker said, please don't open that book. Apparently, she had pulled some pictures from some very racy sites. 
uh, we could reverse Google them and find them if, if we chose to do that. But just know that uh, they'll go to great lengths to send you information to look better than, than what they are, different than what they are next. Um, beware of love bombing where they're showering you with gifts and affection immediately. That's a big red flag on, on the romance scams or big promises. They want to marry you immediately. Um, one big thing to think about, have you really spoken to them? Do they avoid video chatting? Because it might be a guy in a, an internet cafe in Nigeria doing the scam uh, where they're pretending they're a woman. Uh, or vice versa. Um, overt curiosity if they ask too many questions and beware if they're asking you to wire money. Next. Uh, some other red flags, they can't meet in person. They claim they're just amazingly rich. Pictures are generic. Uh, they talk about your future early. They ask for money. Next. Uh, the scammers will research you. They're going to know everything in the world about you. So don't be surprised if they know about your friends and acquaintances and, and they know your likes and dislikes more than you would think they would be able to. Uh, if they bring up investment opportunities uh, and ask for money initially, we've had multiple occasions where people that are older citizens, but they have businesses and they've been viable business people, they're, they quote, fall in love with somebody in an internet scam, and then they're asked to invest in something. Gold, very often, there are a lot of, of opportunities. You will hear in one of these from Jennifer Shaw at Securities. Just know that it's a great place to go to, to, to vet these kinds of things, because uh, we, we had a, a business person that was going to send upwards of a million dollars uh, as an investment. He thought he was going to be getting some gold and, and it was, it wasn't a, a real deal. Uh, they may demand payments in cryptocurrency because it's untraceable. So beware of that. We actually had a woman in Oklahoma who, who auctioned off her home on a romance scam. We only heard about it because she went to the bank and said, how can I convert all these loan pro the money from my home to Bitcoin? And the banker was politely nosy and said, well, what are you doing? And she said, um, I have to convert it to Bitcoin to send to my fiance and he's going to come here and we're going to marry. Uh, we were able to stop it immediately at that point. But if we don't hear those red flags, if we don't hear those things, then we don't know to, to be able to help you. So always be honest with your banker. That's another really valid point because we do want to help you. Uh, don't share your PIN number or your CVV2 code on the back of your debit or credit card if people are asking for that to be able to do transactions with your information. Uh, conduct a background credit check. Again, use the reverse lookup sites and, and check on people. It never hurts to do that. Next. <coughs> Always beware of unsolicited offers and investments. Be wary of the unsolicited investment. Um, as I mentioned, the upwards of a hundred thousand or, or upwards of a million dollars going out from companies on different investments that they think might be real out there. Um, again, checking with Oklahoma Securities. Uh, never send money or invest solely on the advice of somebody you've met on a social media or dating site and avoid guarantees of high returns. Um, it's it just, there are, there's nothing that's going to be a guaranteed 20% return on your money. That doesn't exist. Too good to be true. Avert, avoid urgency and the pressure. Those are the ways that they get you into it and ask questions. Next. If you've been scammed, stop all your communications and block them. Um, <coughs> excuse me, going too fast. File reports with uh, the FTC. If you send a gift card, notify the issuer. Cancel any credit cards you might have used. If you gave your banking account information, absolutely talk to your bank. There is no shame in it. We can change your account. Consider joining a support group. Talk to your friends. Talk to somebody. Next. Okay, um, one good person to talk or one good entity to talk to, Adult Protective Services. If you or one of your friends really needs help, they are absolutely wonderful in discerning who might need that help and how to help them. Next. <coughs> Social engineering is 
the bane of our existence. That's how they hack us. They hack people. I had a friend whose beginning of her social media from her friend was, hi, I'm a gentleman from Oklahoma, Tulsa. <coughs> Excuse me. We know that is not how people from Oklahoma, Tulsa are going to say it. Next. We are the weakest link. Next. So how do we get to the error states? The biggest thing is greed. If they can get us greedy, like the sweepstakes scams, lottery scams, then they can get one over on us. If they can get us emotional, like the grandma, grandpa scam, uh, I'm in jail or romance scams. The biggest emotional draw we see is romance scams and almost impossible to pull these people away from it because they want someone to be in love with them. I mean, it, it's really hard to talk to these people. The third one that they use to get us over is fear. And fear is, uh, we're the IRS. We're going to come arrest you. Or you're in big trouble over this video, so don't tell anyone. Don't let anyone ever say, don't tell anyone. Yet yeah, You can always talk to people. And that is one of the biggest things we want to make sure that you hear me say. Next. More nuances of fraud persuasion tactics. AARP has been a wonderful friend and asset. Don't fail to look at all of their fraud data. They explain better why people can be can ha have a fraud persuasion happen to them. Uh, phantom fixation. They, they they want you to believe that you can see yourself in a a uh, tropical paradise where you have millions of dollars to spend and, and no worries on money forever, phantom fixation, or the romance. Um, social proof is trying to get other people to say that, yeah, this is a good, good thing. We had a church uh, that was helping to promote the selling of dinars, Iraqi dinars, which were really worth nothing but because the church group, including the pastor, sadly, in that group, who, who wasn't meaning to do anything wrong, he simply believed in it, too. But social proof, if your friends and neighbors want to do it, then uh, that, that helps tip you over. Authority figures like I'm the IRS, I'm DEA, I'm any governmental authority going to come arrest you. No, they're not. Um, scarcity is one that I find fascinating because you can actually see that in a non-scamming source uh, if you think about home shopping. It's, uh, well, we only have 10 more of this red version of this purse that's a real deal. And when the scarcity is there and they have the clock ticking down, then they can tip us over. And that's how the fraudsters also use that on us reciprocity like will you give me something i'm going to give you something you make this uh, payment of a hundred thousand and you're going to get millions no you're not the reciprocity never happens uh, the affinity we've described like you're a, a group that is like you your book club people you know uh, consistency they keep harping on the same things in in contrast so um, next i'm gonna go on from those what you need to understand, if you have someone that's being scammed or if you feel like you're being scammed, especially if it's a friend, you're going to be able to assess this better. Uh, we have financial capacity. That is our ability to manage and protect our assets. Next. Sometimes people's brains, the frontal lobe of the brain, can alter in such a way that the, your capacity to make good business decisions is gone. Once it diminishes, you will not be able to turn that back around if it happens to you. It's not dementia. It's not Alzheimer's. So it's not diagnosable as those are in those ways. It is simply someone that loses the ability to make good business decisions. We call that a lack of executive function. That is someone who will come into the bank and bring a, a bad check in. And we say, no, ma'am, we're going to help you with this. We've contacted. This is a fraudster sending it or someone who, who thought they were sending it to their lover somewhere uh, in another romance scam. And once once we are able to um, to convince her that, that, no, that's just not true, she'll be so grateful and say, oh, I'm so relieved. I won't do that again. That same customer will come back next week with another check 
or another scheme that somebody's trying to perpetrate on them. I literally have a friend from Southeast Oklahoma who still calls about every other week. And every time he's like, Dodd, this time it's good, but this time it's real. Uh, Publishers Clearinghouse is still, we just last week, we had someone who believed that they won the Publishers Clearinghouse. And then when they ask you for money up front, that doesn't make sense. But if your executive function is diminished, if you lack executive function, then you will fall for it time and time again. And those are the people that we need to help long term and ongoing. Next. Lottery and sweepstakes scam. Uh, it's the same old story, and I cannot believe it's still working. The methods that they have people send the money back are different now. They will ask for where they used to have people, Western Union. Western Union has done a wonderful campaign to say, no, we, we know what this is and, and we're not going to allow it. Um, but they will have them try to wire it through other sources. And we have found that a lot of our big businesses have, have really gotten onto it and, and they're trying to tamp it down. Uh, but uh, some people will ask them to wire it from their bank and to give their banker a bogus story so that the banker doesn't know. Uh, once we hear something that might be a red flag, we'll try to pull it back and stop the fraud. Uh, Preloaded cards are also a huge way that they do it. Green dot cards, iTunes cards, it's uh, go get, buy these cards and put all this money preloaded on it. You give them the numbers, they immediately have the money. Next. Other payment venues that they're using is just to know that these are out there. There's Zelle, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. There are a ton of the Cash App type uh, capabilities. They all have a purpose. We, a lot of us use those systems and we transfer money with it, but you have to proceed with caution. You have to know, you know who you're sending the money to. Um, even if somebody is sending you money on these, you don't know if they have uh, defrauded someone else and sent it out of their account. So it's good if you can disable incoming funds. You can temporarily re-enable re if you need it for uh, just a short-term use. And beware if you're asked to pay by crypto, Bitcoin. There are fraudsters now who know where all the Bitcoin uh, ATMs are in, in our area. So if they know you're, say, in Oklahoma City, they'll send you a map of all the Bitcoin ATMs that are near you where you can transfer or convert to Bitcoin. And next. Crypto is also used heavily in investment scams. I'm going to remind you again, securities is wonderful on the investment scams. Um, in the last six months, uh, their reported losses are more than $80 million just in investment scams. Research before you invest. And, and don't believe offers of, of huge uh, money coming back in. Uh, FTC has wonderful information on that, on that front. Next. Avoid tech support phone scams. I had thought that they were stopping these, but I continue to hear about them. It's where you'll get a pop-up screen on your computer that says, uh, you have a virus and Microsoft or some entity cares about you. You have to call this number. Well, they get you in, remember we said urgency, so they get you speeding up and, and concerned about things. So then they offer to fix it for a large amount of money. And while they're fixing it, they ask to remote in your computer. Don't let anyone you don't absolutely know remote into your computer because they will then put really bad viruses on your computer. If you have done this, and I have dear friends who have actually done exactly this, if you've done it, get your computer absolutely cleaned and tell them what happened so that they know what, what to be looking out for. There's a great AARP article from last year um, on uh, Jim Browning YouTube that covers this just beautifully. Next. Online shopping scams are surging. And, and this has a little bit to do with the fact that, that we have all been more, we were homebound there for a while. So more people were doing online shopping and it's just become a habit for everybody. You can see in the picture there, that's the, the sneaker that was supposed to be coming in and it, it actually looked pretty slick. And you can see the house, you look looking things that the person got. 
And we've all seen things where you get something that's child sized or something absolutely ridiculous. If it's too good to be true, um, you're not going to get it for that kind of price. And you can Google anytime I have a site that I think, oh, that's something I would be interested in. I'm going to Google and say reviews for that site. And nearly always you'll hear you will get junk. You won't get it. You know, they'll take money out of your account multiple times, whatever. Uh, just beware of online shopping scams. Next. Phishing just covers the gamut, folks. They've gotten so good at in the past. We could say, well, it's going to be bad grammar and bad spelling in the emails. And sometimes that is true. But most often now it can look really professional. Here's an example of one from Dropbox that was not from Dropbox, but they wanted me to click on a link. Next. Here are a couple that you can see. Uh, the one on the left is actually the, the old notorious phishing. It's Bank of Americans instead of Bank of America. The, uh, it has a link in it that if you click that link, then you, they would download viruses on your computer. The one on the right is what you call a pop-up. And that's where you're on your screen and you're typing and something comes up and says, oh, alert, alert, you have a problem. And uh, there's your internet alert code. Like this is really official. Put this in and, and click this. And if you do any of that, you're they're going to download viruses. Next. Here are two examples that uh, I got supposedly from Chase. Um, I, I don't have a Chase bank account. I have a Chase credit card. But the, the, the one on the right was uh, probably fixed after the one on the left uh, has a cheek hold on account instead of check hold. So I think they, they probably realized they were doing a little bit of uh, bad spelling on it. But if if I were to have clicked on any of these, um, then, then I'm going to get viruses. Next. This one really can get a lot of people because it'll say, hey, your Norton system is uh, has gone... Uh, inactive, but we've charged your credit card a large amount of money. So uh, don't worry, we've charged you. And then people click on it because they want to say, no, I didn't mean to do that and get the viruses. Next. And here's one from Geek Squad, very similar. We've, we've done, you're one step stronger now because you've got our system, we've charged you. Next. This is the one that I find just particularly offensive because I love my Netflix. I just have to tell you that is something that I really do enjoy. And when I see something, my Netflix is suspended. Um, if there were something that I were going to click on willy nilly, that might be the occasion. Now I did not, but um, just there are so many things. If, if you get something like this and you're worried that it's the real system, just Google for Netflix yourself and, and be sure now they'll run some of these up high on the Google list. So you have to be sure you're actually going to Netflix. Just be cautious when you're going to sites and be sure you're in the real site before you talk about anything to do with your money. Next. This one um, may be a little harder for you to see. I hope it's bigger on your screen. But, but the, this is one that I received just as we were getting all the warnings from the FBI, Secret Service, the feds, White House, everybody saying uh, the Russian cyber attacks are getting ready to happen. This one I got at Bankers Association at my office, which they usually can't differentiate in a bank. So they probably thought they were getting a bank employee. And it says that, that it is Hungary. At the top, it's .hu, like this guy is from Hungary and he's in love with me, uh, which he's not. But if you see, could see the first line and I believe also the second hyperlink that are on there, both of them are .ru. So both of them are Russians trying to install something or get something in my system. So just know it is out there. That's not something that is bogus that the feds are warning us about. That is just a whole nother attack front from other countries now. And multiple countries uh, do that. But that's Russia's been the big one lately. Next. Don't click on links in emails. This I kind of mentioned earlier, but here's a visual representation of it. If something says click this link for your bank org, you go to your bank, go to a site that you know yourself. Next. 
this one it just depicts well what, what the bad guys are doing on us. This guy is looking at his computer and he's seeing that this woman adores her cat. And who doesn't, right? Um, but, so he knows that that is a, a vulnerability for her next. So he's going to send her an email. The animal shelter is a cat lover. You know, the kittens need your help. And if you clicked on the donation link, then you're going to the bad guys. Next. Scareware is something that pops up similar to that pop up I showed you earlier. Your PC is infected, so you have to click here. No, you don't. Don't click on any of that. Get out of your system. Yeah, if you aren't comfortable with all the techiness, like right, say, get your five-year-old grandchild to come in. I literally, if you have somebody that's a high schooler, that's a grandkid, get someone that you trust to look at it and, and see if you had a problem. Most often you did not unless you did click. Next. Don't get too relaxed if it's a text because they are sending us a lot of the information by text now. In fact, one of the ways that they are continuing to try to get into bank accounts is by sending you a text saying it's your bank, but it's not, and having you click, and then you call them and give them information on your bank account. So just know to be suspicious of your text also. That is the new forefront for phishing and schmishing. Schmishing is text phishing, SMS phishing. Next. If you don't hear me say anything else today, I mean, listen to everything, but the, the big, one of the biggest changes you can make in your world um, is to reconsider your banking password. Most passwords, you, you don't want to let anyone, anyone else use it and change it every six months. Those are all very true, but, and the longer, the better, special characters are better and that kind of thing. Eventually it'll probably be reading our eyeballs, but retina scans. But but right now, while we still have banking passwords, the big thing I'm going to ask you to do is whatever your banking password is, have that be the only place you use it. Investment accounts or banking, you have your own password just for those. Don't use it anywhere else. Don't use it on Netflix or anything, anything out there in the wild. Because Folks have broken into our systems. They have all of our information. If you go to the underbelly of the web, they know everything about you. Trust me. So do not reuse your banking password. That will protect you more than almost anything you can do. Next. Social media is a blessing and a curse. Uh, it's very nice to be able to con contact people or know in your neighborhood who's using what kind of contractor. There's a million good ways to use social media. It's also a million bad ways. Next. Facebook um, is one of the examples. There's a, All of them can have infected links on there. there. There are just different ways they can get you in. People can try to get into your system. I had a friend who is now sadly passed in Enid. She would continually send me all these pictures of guys and say, you need to be connected with this guy. It's someone that got into her system and friended her. And it just took me a little bit of checking to know that I did not want to connect with him. They have no friends. They have no uh, no real pictures on there. There are things you can do to check, to know that that's not really that person. Even if it looks like your friend, they might have hijacked their picture and their name on there. Uh, but if, if you already have that person as a Facebook person on there, don't let somebody else new on. Next. <clears throat> a lot of people trust LinkedIn more than they trust most sites. Um, I do. This uh, Mukhtar Manyev sent me a LinkedIn request saying that he wanted to be my buddy on LinkedIn. Unfortunately for him, he said he worked at Oklahoma Bankers Association, and we only have like 12 people. So really, um, I didn't click on it. He said he was our accountant, and obviously I knew that was not the case. But some of our bankers actually clicked on it, thinking that he was someone up there and that they wanted to reach out. So double check. If, if you see a name and, and company that doesn't make sense, either just don't let them on or do some research before you click, before you let them into your system. Next. Uh, same Jack Barr. This is a uh, Facebook one. He wanted to be my Facebook buddy. No. Next. Um, if your money, if money's wired into an account, it could be a product of fraudulent wire stolen out of somebody's account. Next. 
Um, what that is called is money mules. If someone gets you in the system where they wire money to you and then they have you wire that money on, it happens literally every day. Multiple times a week we work cases on exactly this. Money mules that go into banks, our banks are really good at being able to detect. So if they say to you, we're concerned about this wire that came in, listen to them, talk to them and tell them the truth of what's going on. Next. Uh, we had a case in Massachusetts where a lady started on Words with Friends. The guy pulled her to hang out. She was sending money to Massachusetts. That woman was money muling. She was taking in probably hundreds of thousands, upwards to millions of dollars that she was then sending out of the country. So that, that's the way that people are getting money out of the country. Next. Unemployment fraud. You heard Ray mention the PPP fraud earlier. Uh, Oklahoma was great at responding early on a lot of these. We, unemployment fraud use mules so you get a, a romance scam from someone saying i can't use my bank account in the state of washington i've got to send you my unemployment money well that does not make sense so um don't let anyone wire you money and ask you to wire it back out there you are a money mule at that point and fbi has a whole uh whole case on that or a whole project on that next that's the Money Mule Initiative. I was trying to think of, of what they, uh, Money Mule Awareness is the name of, of their program. And they will actually, it, when they have the manpower, get out and do a knock and talk and say, we think you're being scammed. Next. No, IRS will not call you demanding money. Uh, they certainly will not ask you to put it on a, a reloadable card. That doesn't make sense or Bitcoin, uh, IRS isn't going to threaten you or Secret Service uh, or FBI. Next. Corporate and counterfeit cashier's checks still out there. Check fraud is rising right now. And uh, next. Uh, also, counterfeit uh, credit cards. Uh, we are seeing a lot of skimmers, many of them on ATMs, more of them, way more of them, though, on gas pumps. So if you've used a gas pump with your card and then things start going awry, that may be where it's happened to you. Um, our buddies at the Secret Service are doing a great job of pulling those off. There's a whole task force devoted to that. They're working hard to, to try to get the skimmers off. Um, next slide. The, when there is a skimmer, though, just so you know how it works, when you put in your code, you're at your ATM, you've put in your card. When it asks for your code, I put my hand physically over the keypad. I know that's gymnastics to make it happen sometimes. But if you can make that happen, there is a pinhole camera that is looking at what you key in. And that's how they're able to use your card and they have your information from your card and then they have your pin number. So put your hand over the keypad when you do it next. Our bankers are absolutely the best in the West because they have uh, exceptional training on the whole fraud initiative. Everything happens with frauds. Um, I was invited years ago to the White House and got to present on behalf of our bankers on what we do to protect our seniors as well as all of our customers in Oklahoma. So I, I want to say thanks to our banks who just do such a wonderful job out there. And uh, please listen to them. They're not trying to be hard on you if they're asking too many questions. Next. The other thing that I want you to be sure that you absolutely hear me say today is everyone in Oklahoma is a mandatory reporter of financial exploitation. If you see someone that you suspect, it doesn't have to be slam dunk, if you suspect someone is being financially exploited, you need to report it. Um, so in Department of Human Services, your local police department, you, there are ways to get it into the system. And we are all, there is a mandate for all of us to do it in Oklahoma. So you won't get in trouble for having done it because we, we have to. That, that is a law in Oklahoma. Next. Action steps. If you think you or someone else is being exploited, these are also very important uh, details. Set up your SSA, my social security account. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, just go to my SSA and, and, you can set that up before the bad guys do it for you and try to steal your Social Security money from you eventually. You do not have to be Social Security age to do it. I'd say do it at any age. Disconnect from the fraudsters. 
contact your bank, family, law enforcement, APSA, talk to people. Do not be embarrassed. I had a lady in Norman who lost a huge amount of money on a, on a romance scam. And she was like, honey, let me get in front of the cameras. I want to tell everybody. So please be that woman. It's a little embarrassing, but you know, if you can save your friends and neighbors, their hard earned money, don't be hesitant to talk to people and say, I've learned my lesson. I'm doing better now, but listen to me. Um, don't answer your phone if you don't recognize the number and share your story. Next. Just examples of tools that are offered. There is a, a Take Charge book, which has been kept current for the last 15 years or so on identity theft. Uh, Oklahoma Securities has wonderful info on their site, and I would encourage you to listen to, to Jennifer's uh, webinar that, that is upcoming on this, uh, on this grouping of senior fraud. Next, more tools. American Bankers Association, ABA, also has some wonderful tools and they are not behind their paywall. If you find things that are like, oh, you got to sign in. No, not to get to this. If you go to aba.com slash seniors, there are lots of tools that you can use. Um, if you know someone or have someone in a, a retirement center and you want to post some of these, you know, print them out in full color and, and post these wonderful uh, tools so that people can see and realize what frauds are out there. I also love their new program that they a relatively new program banks hashtag banks never ask that it is adorable just in uh, no banks are not going to ask you your your uh, first dog you ever had they're not going to call you and, and ask you to, to reveal all the stuff but banks don't ask you the questions that might be security questions on other sites so um, it's it's a pretty great little um, little project they've done next. More tools and money smart for older adults by CFPB. We've helped our buddies at the CFPB to, to do that. Jennifer, who, who was one of the big folks that, that started the program, uh, is a great friend of ours. So uh, we have wonderful Fed friends who have helped us on every front. Saveandinvest.org also has information on investment fraud. Next. This is the favorite tool, the favorite resource of our uh, wonderful attorney, Mary Beth Gard, managing someone else's money. If you find yourself in a situation, which many of us do at some course in your lifetime, uh, if, if you're handling money for your sister who's ill or some a parent or someone, you're the caregiver, it tells you all the rules and, and wonderful tips on being able to handle things, even their social security. So. Uh, know that this exists out there. And next, charities. I always have people ask me, how can I know a good charity fraud? Especially now, so many people are wanting to give uh, to the Ukrainian crisis. Um, check on, I use Charity Navigator. That's one of my very favorite. The link is there. Um, the, the Better Business Bureau has a Wise Giving Alliance that also will talk about charities and um, know your charity before you do it. Don't just take an email from somebody because they can say they're Red Cross and they are most certainly not. So uh, you you send it to someone that you know who the right person is. Next. Ah, the questions. Um, I don't know if we have time for questions. I've, I've really sped through some of this to get us to our end time since we started late. I know that Ray has some things he needs to say at the end. So Ray, I'm going to turn it to you, my friend. Thank you. Yes. Well, we do have some questions and uh, good timing because the materials that you showed there at the end about managing other people's money, I'm pretty sure, and correct me if I'm wrong, those are through the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And I believe, aren't they available for free? If people will go to the website and request them, the website's consumerfinance.gov, can't they get them from there? Absolutely, for free. I mean, that's a good price, right? Yeah, absolutely. And along those lines, I think that's, you know, we all kind of find ourselves in that position where we're, we're concerned about someone, how they're managing their money and stuff. And we, we want to help. <laughs> how do you start that conversation with someone? Uh, you know, a lot of us are very private about mm -hmm. our finances and stuff. What do you have any tips on how you start the conversation about, <laughs> you know, what can I so who's on your bank account? You know what I mean? It's 
I, ironically, the my mom was one of the most private people in the world, and and it, she was really later in age before she talked to my sister or me about finances. And we were the ones who could protect her, but she always wanted us to know that she was on top of it and that there wasn't a problem there. So for that reason, it is a hard thing to, to start. But here's what I tell them. I started mine. I know I'm in the older ages now, but I started my, my financial planning early on um, as to who I would use for my powers of attorney, who's going to be making medical decisions and those things. I want to make those decisions now while I still have a, a brain to be able to do it. So uh, because I started mine early, I like to encourage other people just start that conversation with anyone to say, you know, there I heard of a situation where a lady had someone else on her bank account and they ended up taking all the money and, and everyone was unhappy about that. So let's be sure that you talk to them about things that you see on that we, this webinar and others and and say, I have done this at, at an early age. So please, I implore you to do it also. OK. Uh and then I, you, you made the point about adult protective services, and I wanted to make sure that uh, they are a huge resource. They are under the Department of Health and Human Services here in Oklahoma. And I just wanted to throw out there that recently DHS went sort of through sort of a reorganization and you can find adult protective services. They're under, a, they've got a new acronym, it's CAP, C-A-P, and that stands for Community Living, Aging and Protective Services. So when you're looking for aging uh, adult protective services, that's where you might find them on their website. There is a direct phone number for reporting abuse and fraud to uh, protective services, and it's 800-522-3511 if you do have a case like that. So, all right. Well, thank you again, Elaine. Appreciate it very much, you bringing up all this really good information. Uh, thank you again to everybody for your patience. Uh, as we were working our way through uh, our, our difficulties, it's always kind of fun whenever we're, we're uh, putting these things on to see what new and wonderful things the computer can throw at us. So thanks again for attending today. Wanted to remind you, if you'd like to see the recording of this presentation or the one from last week, or you know someone that might benefit from this, please go to our website at oid.ok.gov forward slash senior fraud and you can see that webinar. Now, today's webinar should be available on there by about three o'clock this afternoon. So you might have to wait a little bit before we do that one. Uh, also wanted to remind you, next Wednesday, we have another webinar, 10 a.m. Billy Wallace, who's with the National Insurance Crime Bureau, is gonna be with us talking about contractor and provider fraud. Uh, I'm sitting here listening to the wind howling outside. Uh, we've had recent storms, there's been fires, there's all sorts of opportunities for fraudsters to commit contractor fraud. So this would be a really good one for anyone in Oklahoma to, uh, to come and, and pay attention to. Uh, before we go, one last time, I wanna remind you, you guys play a critical role in fighting fraud. Elaine and I can be out here talking about this stuff uh, and trying to educate people, but we rely so heavily on the public to report any potential fraud. So please, please, please take the time to report anything that you see that seems suspicious. So with that, I will wish you a good week and look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.